Hello and welcome to Linux Server Training 101. My name is Don Crawley. I'm from SoundTraining.net. We're the Seattle, Washington based publisher of learning resources and provider of accelerated training for IT professionals. This time we're doing Linux root password recovery. It's based on Chapter 16 in my book, The Accidental Administrator, Linux Server Step-by-Step -Step Configuration Guide. The book is not required, but if you'd like to get a copy to follow along, it's available from our bookstore at www.soundtraining.net slash bookstore or through other internet resellers such as Amazon and Barnes & Noble. The version of Linux that we're working with is CentOS version 6. The procedures that I'm going to show you should work with any Red Hat based distro and, and frankly many others as well. You'll find that it won't work with some of the Debian based distros. Prerequisites in order to do this exercise you'll need the following. A willingness to work in the Linux command line environment and physical access to a Linux server. This cannot be done across a network so you'll have to be able to sit down at the actual physical console of the Linux server to do these procedures. Equipment software requirements. I'm using CentOS version 6. These procedures should work with earlier versions or any Red Hat based version of Linux. I used a Linux server running as a VM under VMware. You can do this on a physical machine or in VirtualBox or uh, any other type of virtualization environment. So here are the steps that we're going to go through in performing the root password recovery. We'll start by restarting the computer. Then when it comes back up, we'll interrupt the boot process at the grub screen. Just a caution on this, you've got to be ready to move fast when this happens, as you'll see when we do the demo. Then we'll edit grub to force the computer to go into single user mode. In single user mode, no password is required and you're automatically logged on as root. Then we'll change the root password and restart the computer. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Disclaimer, this video is provided solely as a courtesy to you, our viewer. There are no guarantees whatsoever. Please do not attempt these procedures on a production server without first testing them for security and suitability in a laboratory environment. Performing these procedures may open your server to possible attacks, so make sure you have current backups and take precautions including data encryption and additional access controls to protect sensitive data, which is just generally a good idea. So, here we go. So we'll power up our Linux server, and as soon as we see the grub prompt, we're going to touch the E key to enter edit mode. And it'll be pretty fast, so you need to be ready with your trigger finger. Let's go ahead and power it up now. There's the prompt. Let's press E. And like I said, you have to move pretty fast on it, because it only gives you about three or four seconds to do it. And now it gives us the grub menu, and we can choose to modify either one of these kernels. These are simply kernels that they want us to modify. Uh, it doesn't matter, because we're not really modifying the kernel. We're modifying the boot process to go into single user mode. So we'll just go ahead and choose the top one. I'll press E to edit that. Now I'm going to arrow down to the line that starts with kernel. And... We'll touch E to edit that one. I'm going to add the modifier single to the end of that line. I'll press the enter key to accept the change. And now I'm going to touch B to boot the system. And when it comes back, we'll be in single user mode. And single user mode on a Linux system is kind of like uh, safe mode on Windows. Not exactly, but kind of. It uh, starts minimal services, doesn't start networking, for example, um, and it also doesn't require authentication. And so in just a moment, you'll see it'll return a root prompt at the very bottom with no authentication required, and that means that we can then go in and modify the root password and, frankly, any other aspect of the system and save it and then reboot it with the new password. Okay, so there's our root prompt. Again, no authentication required. We'll modify the password with the command P-A-S-S-W-D, Prompts us for the new password. Doesn't echo anything back as we type it in. You're probably aware of that. And confirm it. And now we've updated the password, and we were able to do that without having to log on as root. We're already in there as root. But we're in single user mode, and there's uh, no networking, so this does underscore the importance of having physical security of your servers. But it also says that as long as you have physical access to your server, you can go in and recover the password. Let's say that your predecessor may be left under uh, unfavorable circumstances and didn't leave you with the passwords. At least now you can get in and start working with your system. Let's uh, do a shutdown minus R now to reload the system right away. It takes a moment to do the reboot. We'll do a quick edit here so you don't have to watch the whole thing. So now we're rebooted. Let's just test our login. So we'll use the username root and the password that we changed it to a moment ago. And there we are. We're in.
So, not too difficult to do as long as you have physical access to the server. And again, this underscores the importance of maintaining physical security on all of your Linux and Unix servers, or for that matter, all of your networking gear. If you'd like more information, you can visit our website at www.soundtraining.net. We've got lots of classes available for you, as well as documentation to help you work with different systems. I blog at soundtraining.net slash blog. You can subscribe to our newsletter at soundtraining.net slash newsletter. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Google. If you'd like more videos, they're available through our video channel at www.soundtraining.net slash videos. And the companion book, The Accidental Administrator, Linux Server Step-by-Step -Step Configuration Guide, is available through our bookstore at soundtraining.net slash bookstore or through Amazon and other internet resellers. Well, I hope it's been helpful. For SoundTraining.net, I'm Don Crawley. We'll see you next time.